Okay, I just got back from the football game and the Huskies won, so I'm in a terrific mood. And what better way to celebrate a Husky victory than by talking about taxes? So as we discussed in class, the cost of taxes, at least as far as this course is concerned, is not the cost of what you pay to the government. We're going to assume that the government is going to use the tax dollars uh, wisely in terms of roads or schools or uh, whatever the government might be purchasing, that this is not a cost to society, but that they're going to, that the money is not lost to society. It's moved from uh, the consumers or the producers to the government, and the government is going to use that. The cost of the taxation is mainly the deadweight loss, the inefficiency that is caused by the fact that because of taxes, some mutually beneficial transactions are not going to take place. And what I'm going to do in this video is give a few numerical examples as to how we might calculate this loss. Um, the examples I'm going to use are all involving an excise tax. Now, the excise tax is not the most common tax used, but the, it's easy to think about. The excise tax is a lot like a sales tax, except for a sales tax is usually computed as a percentage of the overall sales. So, for example, if you were to buy something that cost $10, they would add a 6% sales tax, which would be $0.60. Cents. An excise tax is charged per unit sold. So we have an excise tax on gasoline, which is so much per gallon. We have an excise tax on cigarettes, which is so much per pack. And so an excise tax is really just a sales tax, except for the uh, it is calculated per unit sold or per, per quantity, not per total revenue, which would be price times quantity. I'm going to use an excise tax as an example because the principles involved with the excise tax apply to every other tax, but the math is easiest with the excise tax. And so uh, we want our calculations to be simple, uh, or at least as simple as possible, and so we're going to use the excise tax as the prime example in this course. We have a supply curve and a demand curve, which is along the quantity price uh, axes. And uh, let's assume that if the price was $15, no one would want to buy it. And if the price was $2, no one would want to sell it. And that if the, uh, and that the equilibrium quantity was going to end up at 100 and the equilibrium price uh, was going to end up at 6 And now let's, uh, before we think about the excise tax, let's just think about what's going on here uh, in equilibrium before the tax. Uh, we are going to have a consumer surplus, which is going to be equal to uh, a half of 15 minus 6 times 100, right? Because the base of our triangle, of course, is always going to be the quantity, and the height will be the difference between the price, uh, the equilibrium price, and the price where zero people would want to buy. And so this is going to equal uh, uh, 450. And the producer surplus is going to be a half of 6 minus 2 times 100, and that would equal uh, 200. And so our total surplus is going to equal 650. Okay, so now uh, we have this. This is the world before the equilibrium. And now we're, or the equilibrium before the excise tax. And now we're going to decide, uh, the government's going to decide to impose a $3 per item excise tax. So the way to solve this problem is to, uh, you know, what the, <clears throat> well, the problem is, well, what's the effect of that going to be on the equilibrium price, the equilibrium quantity, and the consumer and producer surplus, and how much will be the deadweight loss? So to solve this problem, we first of all have to figure out the quantity where the supply uh, curve and the demand curve are $3 apart, because the excise tax is $3. And I uh, figured that out ahead of time, and uh, if you have a problem like this on your exam or homework, uh, there'll be ways for you to figure it out. Uh, maybe you'll just eyeball the chart, or uh, maybe you'll think about what the equations would be uh, for these two lines and uh, set them $3 apart. That's how I solved this one. And so the quantity is uh, going to be 77. And uh, actually, let me switch colors uh, just to move into the post-tax world. So I'll use red. Uh, so the $3 excise tax is going to be, at, uh, the quantity will be 77. And the price uh, uh, that consumers are going to have to pay is going to be $8. And the uh, price that the producers are going to end up uh, receiving after the tax is $5, right? Eight dollars minus five is three. Three dollars is the amount of the tax. And as I explained in class, it really doesn't matter whether we say that the tax is imposed on the producers 
or whether it's proposed on the consumers. Either way, the economic incidence will be the same. What's going to happen is consumers are going to pay $8, $3 is going to go to the government, and $5 is going to be kept by the producers. And so the producers are only going to produce as much as they'd be willing to produce if the price were $5, because that's what they get to keep. And consumers are only going to buy as much as they'd be willing to buy if the price was $8, because that's how much they have to pay. The excise tax puts a wedge in between supply and demand, and then it leads to a lower quantity, which is, in this case would be 77. So now uh, let's calculate what would happen to our producer surplus and our consumer surplus uh, in this scenario. So our... Uh, our producer surplus is going to be the difference between uh, the, price, uh, the, uh, the, the price that the producers get to keep and this zero. So that's going to be 5 minus 2, of course, times a half. And it's times the new quantity, which is 77. And uh, that's actually going to work out to 115.5, which is less uh, than the 200 that they used to get. And consumers, uh, their consumer surplus, this is the producer surplus after tax. And the consumer surplus after tax is going to be uh, a half uh, times uh, 15 minus 8, because 8 is the new price uh, that they have to pay, times our quantity, 77. And that's going to work out to 269.5. And uh, that, of course, is less than the 450 that they used to get. Uh, the government revenue is the amount of the tax times the quantity that is subject to the tax. Remember that excise tax is a per item charge. So the revenue is going to be $3, because that's the tax amount of the tax, times the 77, which is the, the new quantity. And so uh, that's going to end up being $231. And uh, the deadweight loss, of course, is, uh, I'll shade this in red. This whole area is the deadweight loss. Part of it used to be consumer surplus. Part of it used to be producer surplus. And the, the deadweight loss is going to be a half times the difference between the old quantity and the new quantity. So that's 100 minus 77 times the uh, amount of the tax. So you see it's, it is the area of a triangle, and the amount of the tax, of course, is $3. And so uh, that's going to work out to 34.5. And if you took the old uh, total surplus, uh, which, as you may recall, was 650, subtract 115.5, subtract 269.5, and subtract the 231, you'll get a number 34, which is very close to 34 and a half. I actually made a little rounding uh, to make this work. Uh, the actual quantity wouldn't have been 77. It would have been 76.9230769. I called it 77. Uh, this actual price would have been 5.0769320. I'd call it 5. This actual price would have been 8.0769. I just called it 8. So with, uh, if you hadn't rounded, you would it all would have added up. But this is pretty close, 34 and a half and 34 are pretty close to each other. A couple of other examples. The same idea, but we're going to demonstrate now that the elasticity of supply or the elasticity of demand uh, determine who ends up paying most of an excise tax. And that's actually true of any kind of tax. Uh, as we talked about the... Uh, uh, the tax, the FICA tax, the elasticity of labor is uh, workers have a very low elasticity of labor. Most people just work, and so if their wage is subject to a tax, they don't necessarily work less. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, those that demand labor, which are firms, uh, if their cost of labor goes up because of a tax, they actually pull back pretty, pretty uh, dramatically. They have an elasticity of demand. And so workers end up paying the, the vast bulk of the FICA tax, even though legally it's supposed to be uh, half and half. Uh, and anyway, we're going to use an excise tax to demonstrate the effect of elasticity on who actually pays the tax. With a, an example where the elasticity of supply is pretty elastic and the elasticity of demand is very inelastic. So let's just think of a situation where uh, uh, we have a demand curve that at 100, no one would want to buy the item, and it's pretty inelastic in shape, and that we have a supply curve that at uh, $20, uh, no one would supply the item and have it be fairly elastic. And uh, let's assume that the equilibrium uh, price um, 
was 30, and the equilibrium quantity was 50. And um, again, we can uh, pretty easily compute the consumer surplus, which is going to be a half of 100 minus 30, which of course would be 70, times the quantity, which would be 50. Um, and uh, that's going to be uh, 1750, that's the consumer surplus. And the producer surplus would be a uh, half of 30 minus 20, which of course would be 10 times 50. And so uh, that's going to be 250. And so the total surplus would be 2,000, right? If you just add these, you know, 250. Uh, and you just add these together, and that would be 2,000, and that's going to be the total surplus. And now let's say the government uh, wants to impose a $10 um, excise tax as a way to collect revenue for the government. And so we, again, would need to find the quantity uh, where these two, uh, the supply curve and the demand curve, were $10 apart. And so I uh, calculated that already, and that happens to be at the quantity of $43, uh, excuse me, 43.75. Uh, so we'll just assume that whatever this commodity is, that you can buy more, less than one of it, that it's somehow divisible. And, uh, so we're down 6.25 fewer uh, from uh, where we were uh, without the excise tax. And uh, we're going to assume that the, uh, so, but because of this, the price that consumers pay is $38.75, and the price that producers keep is $28.75. So as you can see, the, uh, for this $10 tax, uh, $1.25 of it is being paid by the producers, and $8.75 of it is being paid by the consumers. And that's why a lot of times when uh, you can, if we have a situation where demand is inelastic, the conventional wisdom that, well, if you tax the producers, they're just going to pass all of that cost on to their customers is true. It's true if demand is inelastic. If the producers have an elastic supply and consumers have an inelastic demand, if you impose an excise tax, even if you say that you're going to impose it on the producers, it ends up falling on the consumers. The producer is just going to pass it on uh, to the consumers. And uh, we can again calculate what the uh, consumer surplus and the producer surplus would be. Uh, the consumer surplus is now going to be a half times uh, 100 minus 38.75 uh, times our new quantity, which is 43.75, uh, which is 1339.8. So uh, this is, uh, the old consumer surplus was 1750, 1339.8. So that's, you know, uh, what, uh, over $400 of consumer surplus uh, that has been lost uh, because of this uh, $10 tax. And the new producer surplus is going to be a half times uh, 2875 minus 20 times 4375. And that will equal 191.4. Which is, uh, you know, it's obviously a loss to them from the 250 that they had, but it's not uh, nearly as big a loss as the consumers suffered. And then the revenue the government gets is going to be uh, 10, because remember that our tax, uh, our tax rate is 10, times the quantity, which is 43.75. So the government's going to collect $437.50 uh, from this particular uh, tax. And then our deadweight loss would be uh, a half, I'll say that in red again, just to emphasize the lostness of deadweight loss, will be a half times the uh, new quantity of, subtracted from the old quantity, so 50 minus 43.75, times the amount of the tax, which is 10, and uh, that's going to equal uh, 31.25.